with this little meter and testing these beverage that we have out here, we're going to show you how these beverage can age you. What we're looking for when we do the test is a negative number. And this is what I'm going to show you right now. So here, let's start with Sprite. How many people drink Sprite? So here's your Sprite. And we're going to pour some Sprite here. And we're going to pour all these beverages out, okay? And then I'm going to measure it to show you if you're aging yourself or if you're doing an antioxidant for yourself. And as I'm always asked, how many people like to age fast? Nobody. I don't think so. I know I don't. So I would trust that you do not want to age fast either. So here's the Gatorade that we give the children. And of course the Sani. And of course Aquafina. Did you know there's aging in your water? I mean, when I found this out, I was floored. And what about our tap water? Is our tap water aging us? We're gonna find out. Again, remember, when I put this meter in, we're looking for a negative number. If it's a positive number, we age it. It's oxidizing you, rusting. Like when you cut an apple in half, you see the apple begins to age, rust. So now, let's see what's going on with your Sprite. Turn this meter on. Make sure it's in the right mode so you can see the number. And of course, here's the beverage, and this is Sprite. Now, let's look at Sprite. That number again, it's a positive number. To over 230 and climbing, 250, right? So you know that Sprite is aging. What about Pedialyte? We give these to babies. Are we setting the babies up to be sick? Are we aging the babies quickly? Let's see what's going on with Pedialyte. That's Pedialyte, and the number is like 192, climbing upwards, right? How about Gatorade? Gatorade we give to the, our athletes to play football for dehydration purposes. Now where's our Gatorade? It's a positive number. And of course it's, oh, 290 and still climbing. All right? So, Dasani, is Dasani aging you? Let's see. Yes, the Sony is aging you. It's also positive at 270. What about Aquafina? Aquafina number 207 and climbing. And of course, it's a positive number. Now your tap water, everybody have tap water in their home, right? So let's see what tap water is doing for you. Tap water, oh, it's jumping. Over 300, going up 400 and climbing. That's your tap water. Now, the water of choice, let's see what happened. We're looking for a negative number. So far, everything here has been positive number. So now, let's see the negative. If it's a negative, what number we have here? Negative 389. Now, this is the water of choice for anti-aging. I know I don't want to age fast. Do you? So, again, here's the question. Do you want to age fast or do you want to age slowly? If I were you, I know this is my water of choice. Hi, this is Charmaine again. And what we're going to be doing today, we're going to be looking now at the beverage that we're drinking, but we're going to see if they're acid or if they're alkaline. So over here we have a chart. Our charts start from 1 to 14. 1 Sickness, if it's very acid, you're over here. Neutral is seven. Our body pH is 7.365, so we need to be slightly alkaline. Now, let's see what these beverages look like, okay? Now, here's our Sprite, and we're gonna use a liquid that we use to test to see how acid the beverage is. Have you ever raised fish? If you did, you know the fish cannot survive in an acid environment. If the water put in the fish tank is too acidic, what happened to the fish? Yes, they're gonna go belly up, they die. So let's see what's going on with our beverage. When last did you take, test the beverage that you're drinking? So let's see what happened. Here is the Sprite. I'm just gonna put a couple of drops in each li liquid. And then you're gonna look and see if it's making you sick or if it's making you alkaline. Okay, so let's stir these waters up. Let's clean this off. Let's stir it up. 
Up. So I'm just stirring, stirring the liquid so you can see a true color of what each one represents. Now, we're going to take these liquids and take them to the chart. And you can tell me if it's either sickness or if it's health. So let's look at our Sprite. Is that sickness or is that health? Okay, the Pedialyte. Is that sickness or is that health? That's where it is, right? What about the Gatorade? Is that sickness or is that health? How about our Dasani? Is that sickness or is that health? And of course, our Aquafina. So, so far, all these liquids we have tested is acidic. So what about our tap water? Again, the tap water looks like it has to be slightly alkaline or neutral because if the tap water look anything like these beverage here it will rust the pipes not your pipes this is being concerned about is the city pipes and if the city pipes are rusted what do you think will happen it will create a water main break so therefore there's chemicals that's added to this tap water to raise the pH now here's the kangen water and what's that health can you see that? So in my estimation and recommendation, the Kangen water is the beverage of choice. Now, here's what we're going to do. So we look at these water and we say, this is your body on the rest of the beverages. So let's see what happens. Let's start here. Tap water. This is what you drink. But you start to introduce the Kangen water to your body. Once you do that, it raises the pH. Now, let's see what it does for Aquafina. Your, this is your body on Aquafina. Let's add Kangen water to the Aquafina. Raises the pH. How about the Dasani? Let's see. Raises the pH. Now, here's the next beverage, Gatorade. This is what we give to children. Let's see, they're playing sports, and this is what you're supposed to do for hydration. Let's see what happens. Ah, pH does not change. Let's look at the Pedialyte. I'm pouring, still didn't change. How about the soda? This is the Sprite, and this represents all carbonated beverage. As I always say, if you're breathing oxygen and your body let out carbon, why is it you're drinking carbonated beverage? Hmm. So let's see what it does. The pH does not change. So as you see now, this is Sprite and it's diluted. Now, the Sprite never changed because the Sprite is so acidic. The acid in the Sprite is equivalent to battery acid. So to neutralize the Sprite, you have to drink at least 32 to 1 ratio, meaning you drink one bottle of this, you need to drink 32 bottles of Kangen water to balance out the Sprite. So now let's see what happens when we do this with the Sprite. We, all these beverages are nicely neutralized, raise the pH on them. So let's start here with our Dasani. Turn it right to acid. What about Aquafina? Turn it to acid. So when you drink Sprite, you know what you're doing. You are introducing battery acid to your body. What about the tap water? And of course, the Kangen water make it real acid. So again, do you still want to drink Sprite? As one young lady said, can I have some ice with that? Would you want ice with this? The beverage of choice should always be Kangen water. Hi, my name is Leroy Francis, 
and my job today is to explain the microclustering properties of this wonderful Kangen water. And what do we mean when we say microclustering? You ever drink a lot of water and feel it swish around in your stomach? It's because the amount of molecules per cluster of the, of the tap water and the bottle waters that we drink every day. And to illustrate what we're talking about is if you're trying to throw, for example, um, golf balls or tennis balls through a chain link fence, you're not going to get all of that going through. But if you try to throw marbles through there, it will just go through easily. And we're going to demonstrate that today by, um, with some tea bags. Yamamoto green tea is my tea of choice today. And we're going to show you by pouring this water on the tea bag. What do you always have to do before you make tea? You usually have to boil the water, right? But today we're going to make tea with room temperature water. And we're going to illustrate exactly what happens in your body when you drink this water, it goes right there. So, this is Yamamoto green tea. I'm gonna give the, the tap water a head start. And this is Kangen water. Notice it start making tea immediately. So what happened here? This one tea bag, because of the microclustering property of the water, it can make several tea, several cups of tea. If I get my my tea bag going right here, there you go. And we can do it again. So right here we have three cups of tea. And, and just to prove that this ain't no magic show, I'm going to take this tea bag over here and I'm going to pour some Kangen water on it. And there you go. It's tea. So there's nothing wrong with the tea bag. And let me try doing it again with the tap water. Now that we give it a kickstart. struggling can make tea. So that's why it's not recommended that you use this water when you're taking your medication, but it's the perfect water for taking your supplements, your vitamins and stuff like that. You want to use just the clean water from the machine. So this is basically the properties of the, the water that is so amazing, why it makes you so hydrated. And I'll just go ahead and take a sip of my favorite tea. Hi, my name is Nicholas Gordon and Johnny Sutter. And we got a couple more demos with Kangen water for you. First off, Johnny's going to demonstrate how well the Kangen water works with um, cleaning your fruits and vegetables. Because normally you use tap water. So go ahead, Johnny, and start getting them ready. All right. Here's the. What I'm about ready to do is just open them up, and I'm going to put a little few tomatoes on one side and then I'm going to put a few more on the other side and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour the clean water, I should say uh, tap water into the tomatoes just to give them a head start and after that I'm going to pour a little bit of Kangen water into the other side this is, this is 11.5 we're using right here and we keep it in a dark container because you want to keep the light, air, and as well as shaking it up because that will uh, disrupt the properties of the water. So, so the 11.5 water is, is, we use it to clean. You can actually go green in your household with this water right here. Um, I use this amount in every load of washing my clothes. I don't use any laundry detergent. I just put this water right here inside uh, each and every load. Uh, while we're letting that soak, you know, uh, simulating washing your fruits and vegetables, I'm going to go ahead here and uh, get some oil out. Now we have some uh, sesame seed oil and the thing with the sesame seed oil is that what happens when you mix oil and water? 
What did they teach you in school? They told you, well, it don't mix, right? Right. So. Well, Nick is pouring a little bit of sesame seed oil. So they don't mix. That's what they taught us in school, right? Right, exactly. Okay, so I'm pouring just regular tap water, and we see the oil is kind of like rising to the top. Yeah. Now I'm going to take some of this 11.5. Now this 11.5, I tell you what, is uh, some amazing water. You see what it just did to that oil? It broke it down. All right, so Johnny, why don't you uh, check on your tomatoes and see how those are doing. Okay, this is what I'm going to do here. Now, most people don't know, but your fruits and vegetables come with an oil-based pesticide. And they always tell you, Nick, when you bring your fruits and vegetables, what do you do when you get home with them? Well, I wash them under the tap water. That's correct. They wash them under the tap water. Now, seeing under the tap water, what happens? Nothing. See there? There's nothing there. Nothing but water. But when you use the 11.5, that good, fresh taste of fruit when you pick it right off the tree, or your vegetables when you pick them out of your garden. Look at that right there. Can you see that? That all that oil-based pesticide off the fruit. I should say the vegetables. And what are we gonna do, Johnny, this time? Well, this time we're gonna show you what's in your water. When I talk about what's in your water, you can't see this, but you can tour tell it when you put it on your skin. So Nick is going to pour some tap water and then as he pours the tap water he's going to also pour some kangen water. And as he pours the kangen water, as you can see they both look the same. Doesn't look like anything's in it. But what Nick is going to do, he's going to put some drops in the water that's going to show you the chlorine that you're putting on your body that's in this water. And he's going to stir it up a little bit so you can really see it. Now this chlorine, a lot of times is odorless. Well, I shouldn't say odorless, but you can smell it. And what he's going to do, he's going to cut an apple up, and we're going to show you how this takes the chlorine out the water. Man, this is really dark. You see how dark this is? There was a lot of chlorine in that water. Now this is just like if you were to be in your shower, you're taking a shower, and that chlorine that's coming from your shower head from the water will like exactly absorb right into your skin. There's a lot of apples he's putting in there. You see one thing? See it's getting lighter now? So that's showing you how chlorine soaks into your skin just like taking a shower. And if we leave that in there just in about another two minutes, all that chlorine will be absorbed into the apple, which you can represent your skin. Look at that. All the chlorine is now absorbed into the apple. Now this is just like your skin would be. If you were to take a shower, that chlorine will be inside your body now. Isn't that amazing?